I still tear up at like every single birth that I go to, but you know, this birth particularly was so special, not only because Kelsey is a friend and a repeat client, but because of like the circumstances Mm -hmm. and I just couldn't stop crying. (laughs) That's amazing. Hi, I'm Rachel, owner of the Natural Birth Site, certified birth doula, childbirth educator, and midwife's assistant. And I'm Tiffany Muniz, certified birth doula, lactation counselor, and midwife assistant. Here, you'll learn all about different aspects of pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. Remember, none of this information should take the place of your care provider and is not medical advice. Birth is not a medical emergency. Thanks for listening. Hey everyone, welcome to the Natural Birth Talk. I'm your host, Rachel. And I'm Tiffany. And we are here today with Tiffany's previous client, Kelsey, and we are talking about her at-home vaginal breech birth, which was also a VBAC, a vaginal birth after cesarean. But before we get on to all of those nitty-gritty awesome details, I want to let Kelsey introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm Kelsey. I'm excited to be here. Mother of three boys now, and I've had three crazy birth experiences. First, second, and third were all very different. So I'm excited to talk about my third one mostly. Um, Yeah, the vaginal breech birth. I'm excited. I come from a healthcare professional background. So I am actually a nurse practitioner in cardiology, nothing um, women's health or child related, but I feel like I have a lot more education as I became a mother with, with those backgrounds. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. So Tiffany, I'm going to let, since she's your client, I'm going to let you go ahead and ask most of the questions and I'll just be here to like chime in and chat with you guys. Perfect. So Kelsey, I want you to touch a little bit on your first two births and kind of like what led you down this path of, of home birth and, and education and all of that. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I went into my first birth kind of blind. I got pregnant. We know we got married, finished my degree, very excited to be a mom, got pregnant, had my first pregnancy announcement, yada, yada, yada. I was also, that was back in 2017. So I was finishing up my NP degree and graduating from college, taking boards in the middle of my pregnancy. So I did not put any work into that pregnancy. I just kind of trusted the system, had a great pregnancy, went into labor on my own, did just went to the hospital, all the traditional things. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. Unfortunately, I ended up with a C-section and um, looking back, I felt like there was a lot of things I could have done to avoid that. So yeah, it was a traumatic, uh, it wasn't an emergency C-section, but the whole hospitalization was traumatic for me. So yeah. I knew when I left that hospitalization that I did not want to ever have a C-section ever, ever again. So yeah. I, knew from that day on that if I had more kids, I did not want to have a C-section. So I knew I was going to be doing a lot of work on my end to avoid that. So I was actually reading up on natural births before I even conceived my second child. And I knew that if I had to have a natural birth, I was very nervous about the pain. So that led Mm -hmm. me to meeting Tiffany as a doula, hiring a doula into then conceiving my second child, which then I ended up having, a. I knew I wanted a VBAC. Mm-hmm. That was my, my number one goal. And then my, I knew I wanted to do that naturally. So I didn't want any intervention. And then as I met with Tiffany, I learned more and educated myself. And she provided me with a ton of education on other things that could be better and have great outcomes as well. Mm-hmm. So we worked our tail off and then, I had, <laughs> um, then I had my VBAC. That was in 2019. So my C-section was 2017, 2019, had my hospital VBAC, also went great. He was my biggest one thus far. So he was eight pounds, 11 ounces. Um, okay. Had minimal she rocked it. Injury. She rocked it. If I, that's you know. awesome. If you, that's, yeah. not a, yeah. that's not a huge baby, but that's not a tiny baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. My first right. one was eight pounds. Um, okay. So my second being eight, 11, I felt like it was big, but mm-hmm. you're right. Yeah. There are yeah, it could have been bigger and far more painful, but it really wasn't as bad as I thought. I was actually eight eleven when I was born, okay. which is crazy Were because you really? when you look at me, yes, that's so like funny. You're tiny. so tiny now. <laughs> <laughs> so then, fast forward. I guess I'll just move right on into my third pregnancy. 
Uh, home birth was not in the plan initially. <laughs> I will be honest. Uh, that was a absolute, I'm not going to do that. So we were just planning another VBAC in the hospital setting. Can I just interrupt you really quick? Because I yeah. want to, I just want to tell my point of view from this. So, <laughs> so whenever she was pregnant with Griffin, her second, she kept telling me all these things that she wanted for her birth. And I was like, are you sure that you want to have your baby in a hospital? Like, it sounds like everything you're telling me, you really want like an out of hospital experience. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think for Kelsey, you know, it was, it was important because it was her first VBAC to be in the hospital. It was her first unmedicated birth. So having like all of those things there to, to just like help her feel better was really, really important. Mm -hmm. So you know, go to whenever she tells me that she's pregnant with her third. And I just kept getting this vibe, right? Mm -hmm. She kept saying, no, we are 100% on board hospital. I, I'm not really willing to do or talk about it at all. So mm -hmm. one day I woke up and I just was like, you know what? I have to get this off my chest. I feel like my gut is telling me that she wants a home birth. So then I texted Kelsey and I said, Hey, can I, can you just call me whenever you're on your way home from work? And what we had like an hour long conversation. And I just said, like, listen, my gut is telling me that like, you want this and I don't know why. And you can definitely tell me if I'm wrong, but you know, I just feel like you should meet with some midwives and, and talk to them. And, um, yeah, Which was so from smart. there. Yeah. Right. Right. And so I gave her our friend Maggie's phone number uh-huh. And then, Love yeah. Maggie. Yep. And yeah. then the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I will say I, the home birth was, I, the idea of it, um, was, was great, but I, I work in the medical field, right? So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm alerted to all the scary things. And so right. I always had that kind of devil on my shoulder. Like, what if, what if, what if, what if, right. so then fast forward, Tiffany, you'll, re you'll remember this aspect of things, which kind of was the turning event too, after you had messaged me actually the scans actually before. So when I had my, um, 20 week ultrasound, everything was fine, but baby wasn't in optimal position. So they wanted to repeat the scan again at the three week mark. So we went ahead and did that. I repeated another 20 week or at this point, 23 week ultrasound. And then at that point, they couldn't see the right side of the heart. And so everything else checked out, but then they baby still wasn't in optimal positioning. So they sent me over for a level two ultrasound. So now I'm on my third scan. Mm -hmm. I had that done at a, a, another center and I actually got results that day. And the physician that read the ultrasound then said, you know, everything on the right side of the heart looks fine. We can see all of those pictures, but we, now we can't see the spine. Well, then he wanted to repeat the scan again. So even they, though they had already seen the spine, they already had pictures yes. previously of right. the spine. Yes. Yeah. Oh, geez. But they couldn't see the spine, you know, at this level two ultrasound because of optimal positioning again, or a suboptimal positioning, I should say. So it is their recommendation now to repeat the scan. And I respectfully declined and said, yeah. I don't think that's necessary. I'm just going to go back to my OB. Well, I did. And they too said, yeah, I think that based on these other two, but I can't override their recommendations basically. So, okay. um, but they said, you know, if you, if you're fine with it, we're fine with it. But at this point, I'm just frustrated with the system. And mm -hmm. I felt like that was, you know, the spiral of events that was starting and I wasn't even close to labor. So I was frustrated. And then this came up with Tiffany and you know what, you know, I thought maybe we should just reconsider it. I brought mm -hmm. it up to my husband and he was an absolute no. <laughs> <initially>. <laughs> but then he also knows how I am and said, you know, I'm not going to be able to stop you. So if, if you want to do this, I guess, you know, whatever he trusts me. And he made that yeah. clear that he knows that I wouldn't do anything that would harm my baby or myself. And so, which, which is so important. And it makes me so mm -hmm. happy that your husband recognized that. Yeah. Because Tiffany and I hear a lot, like moms are like, well, I really want a, a home birth, but my husband's just not comfortable with it. Yep. And, yeah. um, you know, it is, it is husband's baby, your partner's baby too, but they really should be trusting you and your body because you're the one growing the baby. So if right. you're a smart person and you're comfortable with it, I, I love that he is basically said to you, like, I trust you. If that's what you really want, I'm not thrilled, but it's okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So fast forward, I then we transitioned to a home birth that was in April and my baby was born in early August. And so we transitioned around April. I want to say 26, 28 weeks, roughly. Yeah. And then I stopped scheduling appointments there, had a great rest of my pregnancy. And then, oh, I'm trying to think my timeline is a little off. I want to say I was probably 36 weeks when we decided that baby was breech when Maggie checked me at home. Um, So that kind of threw a wrench in things. Then we're planning this home birth which at this point I'm very comfortable with. I'm happy with the decision, getting mm-hmm. excited, planning things. And then my baby is breech. <laughs> not a good thing. I think I even said, I will not deliver a breech baby at home. Multiple times. Yeah. Multiple, <laughs> times. Multiple times. So I, back to the working board, I went and I did everything in my power to try to flip baby. Mm-hmm. I, did all the natural things at home. Um, we did the homeopathy. Mm-hmm. Am I saying yep. That yep. Yeah, we did. The yep. We tried that. I did the inversions at home. I actually broke my ironing board because I was doing it so <laughs> often. <laughs> uh, my husband had to help me in and out of positions on a regular basis. I tried the, what is it? Mile circuit. Mm-hmm. I tried that. So we did, we did lots of things trying to flip baby. Oh, my in-laws have a a pool and I did a lot of handstands trying to flip (laughs) my baby. I mean, I exhausted all efforts. You did acupuncture, right? I did acupuncture. Mock combustion. Spinning babies, I'm sure. Yes. On to spinning babies. Chiropractic care. Yes. All of that. And then at the last stitch effort, I think I was 38 weeks. I actually went over to a bigger center and had a a version and it was unsuccessful. So my baby remained to breach. You literally tried everything and baby stayed breach. And I definitely think that in cases like that, there's probably a reason that baby was breach. I would agree now. (laughs) Now, at the time, you're like, why? (laughs) Yes, at the time, I was. Oh man, it was a it was quite the emotional roller coaster. So after all of that, I stopped working because I was in a very bad mental state Mm -hmm. because I felt like my only option was now a C section, and that was devastating to me Mm -hmm. because I had put in a lot of work. We were excited about this home birth. And then my husband too was, was upset. He, we try, let me back up a little bit with the version. I did not get an epidural at first and I didn't want one and it was very painful and it was very uncomfortable for me and I couldn't relax. Uh, They tried for about 40 minutes and it was unsuccessful. And they, you know, said, if, if you get some you get some pain relief, we could probably try again. And that would increase your chance of the baby flipping. And I was not in favor of that. My husband actually said, you know, if you don't get an epidural now and try this, you're, you'll never know, you know, and Mm -hmm. what if the baby, what if you get an epidural now and the baby flips and you can still have your home birth? What if I'm like, okay, if I don't do it, I guess my chances are out. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and got the epidural. They tried again and it was still unsuccessful. So yes, we literally did everything possible. Yeah. And then when I stopped- What an emotional place to be, sorry. But like, I mean, can you, I mean, you obviously can imagine, but like Tiffany, you were there and I know I'm sure you felt some of that emotion, but like listeners, can you just imagine- having this whole plan and this whole thing and knowing you don't want a C-section because we've already been through the C-section and then being told or feeling like, okay, you've done everything you can and your only choice is a C-section. You know, I have to say that like, you know, after it happened late that night, it was late in the evening after you were done trying Mm -hmm. the versions. So we didn't really talk much that evening. Of course, I knew that they were, you know, they were unsuccessful. But the next day, I remember I was at my office and we talked on the phone. Um, Mm -hmm. and I was worried. I, Mm -hmm. you know, talked to her on the phone. She was so distraught. And the only thing that I could think to do was just like, go get her, you know, like go be with her at her house because 
you know, I know her previous stories and I was there for her, for her middle child's birth. And I knew how much this meant to her and how much it meant to her to avoid a C-section. Right. Yeah. And thankfully, I think your sister came and picked you up. So I didn't, yeah. I didn't, but I was about to. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then from there, I called our local OB who took care of my pregnancy um, up until I transitioned to home birth and they were aware of that. So it wasn't a, a secret to them. And I called and told them, you know, here's the update. And they got me in and I talked to one of the OB physicians and you know, she straight up told me that this is my only option for you as a C-section. And I said, you know, what if I show up in labor mm-hmm. and the baby's coming out? Will you still deliver me vaginally breach? And she said, no. Wow. So, you know, she said if the baby was like coming out, but she was not going to agree to that. Like it was not a plan that she was willing to advise me to do. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. You know, she's like, we're here if you need me, but you need some time to heal from the version. So you don't need to, you know, plan a C-section now. We'll just recap on this next week. That was on a, my version was on a Wednesday. So I went and saw her on a Thursday and then kind of just chilled all weekend. I still didn't really have a plan. My plan was not to schedule a C-section. I wanted to try to go in labor on my own, but I didn't know if I was going to stay home or go to the hospital or what. Mm -hmm. I ended up talking to my midwife, which my, was my plan to keep her in the loop, the home birth midwife. But then I talked to her on Friday morning and we had a very long conversation and she said, you know, I'm here for you. I'm, I'm willing to help you with whatever you need. And if you decide you want to have a home vaginal breach, I am willing to do that for you. So hearing her say that was, I think what I needed because Mm -hmm. I was under the impression that she wasn't, that wasn't an option, but her and I just hadn't been able, we weren't able to talk about it because I was on right. such a bad mindset. In my mind, my only option was a C-section. But once Maggie and I talked about it, you know, she was like, I can come. Well, she was planning a visit the next week. So we just planned to talk whenever she had gotten there, as long as I didn't go into labor. And I didn't, um, cause I was only 38 weeks and I hadn't gone early with my other two. So I kind of knew I would be pregnant up until 39, at least, or I assumed (laughs) not that I knew I lost my train of thought here. Hold on. You're okay. I did want to say two things. Like one, I appreciate that your hospital care provider gave you that week to think about it and talk about it and didn't just start drilling you with like, we need to get this on the schedule. We need to get this on the schedule. So I definitely appreciate that. And I think sometimes the assumption is like, well, if the hospital won't do it, a home birth midwife won't do it. Yeah. And that's kind of how I felt, you know, if this is, you know, a major, major risk and nobody's willing to take that risk with me, then who am I to over Trump everyone? Right. Except that all you over Trump was hospital policy. Correct. That's the thing. Like, and that's what I was going to say. Kelsey, I don't know if you remember, but whenever you would talk to me about it, we talked about how that particular OB physician acknowledged that it wasn't because breach was unsafe. It was because they weren't trained in how to safely deliver a breach baby. Yes. Which is key. That that is the key. The key to safely delivering a breech baby vaginally is that it's in the hands of someone with proper training. Hey, listener, do you want a comprehensive yet concise and inexpensive online at your own pace natural birth education course to help you prepare for natural birth, pregnancy, and postpartum? Then check out the description below for that and our helpful products guide. Now back to the show. Yes, and she, yeah, I, I'm glad you brought, I'm glad you reminded me of that because I was very thankful because I knew that and when she told me that I knew that she did have my interest in her best, you know, that I was in her best interest. It wasn't surgery or anything that she was trying to get out of me, but she openly told me, you know, that it's not unsafe per se. It's just that I haven't been trained to do it. Mm -hmm. And she, and no other provider in her practice also does vaginal breach delivery. So therefore it was not an option with their practice at all. And the hospital probably didn't allow it for insurance reasons. Correct. <laughs> Billing, you know. Yep. <laughs> so I think what I, after that, I, you know, I, again, it's kind of hard for me to remember how I felt each day, honestly, but what I, I spent that week meditating mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. praying, reading, mm-hmm. educating. Then my my whole educational plan was shifted. And now I'm educating myself about vaginal breach deliveries. That's yeah. where my focus went. And I took a C-section off the table. Like I, all I kept telling my husband was, I am not having a C-section. I'm not, I don't know how I'm going to do this yet, but I'm not having another C-section. You trusted your body. You trusted your baby. You trusted your instincts. Mm -hmm. I did. So I love it. My due date was actually August 4th and that came and went. And for some reason I wasn't nervous after we had decided that we were going to do a home birth still after Maggie and I had agreed that she was going to come check me. And as long as everything was okay, baby was safe. I was safe. And she was going to continue monitoring those want monitoring us every step of the way. And at any point, if she felt like I needed to be transferred, we were going to do that. So mm-hmm. that was our plan. And I was comfortable with that. And I, um, did not, I wasn't nervous. I don't remember feeling scared. I was anxious to have my baby, of course, but because I had that week to mentally prepare, I think that took all of my nerves away, you know, and then we all got excited. Right. We're doing this. We're all going to yeah. yeah. have a home vaginal breech baby. God will. Well, and I think it's also important just to tell people that Maggie, your midwife had been to a vaginal breech birth just a few weeks before you we realized that your baby was going to stay breech. So I yes. think that that is an important distinction too, that and helping me decide. Yes. Right. Exactly. Because you also knew the other woman who had had the vaginal breech home birth. Yes. Thank you. Yes. See, I'm yes. so glad you're reminding me of these things. Yes. yes, yes, yes. That was key. So another mom who was first time mom having home birth, we, we were communicating back and forth our whole pregnancy because I know her in passing from years before and she hired um, Tiffany. And so she actually reached out to me before she was doing all of these things and was planning a home birth and asked me why I wasn't doing a home birth, you know, but again, <laughs> that all changed and she delivered her baby and it was breach. And, and it was a, a surprise. Yeah. We didn't know that baby was breach <laughs> until she was pushing her baby out. <laughs> At home. Yes. At home. So, After that happened and Maggie was present for that, Tiffany was present for that. And then I have, you know, this breech baby. So they had already been through all of that, which helped me feel more comfortable with it as well. So, and that was pretty recent. So it was, it was like raw for when I was going into labor, all of that was, was very recent, which, you know, helped ease my mind for sure. It's hard to know if I would have committed to a home vaginal brief without that experience, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Let's, let's, I really want to hear the whole story. So let's like get into the birth story because I'm super excited for that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Sometimes I get caught up in the details. (laughs) No, you're good. I love all the details. The thing is you're a great storyteller. Yeah. And we don't usually bring birth stories onto the podcast. That's not what our podcast is for, but in your case, your birth story is so educational and there's so much they can learn. So all those little details, everything is exactly why we wanted to bring you on because they're really important to helping the audience learn and understand. Okay. Well, the birth story is kind of, it's kind of fast. I don't feel like there's a whole lot of details. I mean, I, my pregnancy went along just fine. My due date was August 4th. Like I said, it came and went. As they usually do. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We kind of chilled. Um, I didn't have any really good signs of labor, hung out with my family. And um, Sunday night, uh, this is kind of funny, actually. My three-year-old was coughing a lot. I put We put the kids to bed like we normally do, and my three-year-old was coughing a lot. And I kind of waited, you know, should I just let him work it out? He has terrible allergies. And so sometimes he just coughs when he first lays down and then it kind of goes away, but it was 11 o'clock at night. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this poor kid, he's not going to get any sleep. And what if I go into labor? Should I medicate him? Should I not? Should I do something? Well, I did. I ended up giving him some cough medicine. So I went in, woke him up about 1130 and gave him some cough medicine. And then fortunately he settled down within an hour. But what I didn't realize is that I was having contractions that whole evening. Well, after we put him to bed, I was having contractions, but I was too worried about, should I medicate my three-year-old? Should I not? Should I just let him kind of fizzle out? 
And then after I got him settled in and I gave him some medicine and he fell asleep and stopped coughing, my contractions were picking up kind of a lot. And I was like, oh, shoot, I think this is it. <laughs> I've been ignoring it because I've been distracted. Which is very common, I feel like, with moms. Like, their bodies won't let them kind of relax down into it if if your body knows that there are other things to take care of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And so once he kind of settled in and my contractions picked up, I think I messaged you around maybe one. Yeah, I think that's AM roughly let you know that I, you know, I think it was picking up and that maybe you should head over. And I messaged Maggie the same thing. And then I think you contacted the photographer because I did have a photographer as well. Yes. So at this point, everybody was contacted. I did wake my husband up because he was asleep. I told him to go to sleep. I, I wasn't sleeping anyways. And Um, he went to sleep, but I woke him up after I had talked to Tiffany and then filled up the tub. By this point, everyone is there by about two 30 in the morning. And, um, I was having some good contractions. So I wanted to get in the tub. My plan was that I really, really wanted a water birth, but Maggie did make it clear that it was going to be difficult for her with a breech baby. And so the plan was not to deliver in the water, but I was able to labor in the water. So I got in the water, um, which Ease my contractions felt great. I would have loved to have a water birth. That was an amazing experience to labor in the water. I'm really glad I got to do that though, because now I know. Yeah. And then my contractions slowed. We kind of all agreed that I was getting too comfortable and maybe I should get out to see if my contractions would pick back up. So we did that. And for sure they did. So (laughs) I... I would say 4.30, 4.30 AM, 5. I was, yeah. yes, they were getting more intense and I was starting to involuntarily push. So then we agreed that uh, Maggie and I had discussed that I needed to be probably on all fours in, in the bed if I, we were going to do the vaginal breach delivery, because that would be the easiest for her to monitor the situation and right. positioning to get baby out. Yep. So we did that, um, got the birth ball up on the bed. Um, I got on all fours and wow, the, uh, contractions were very <laughs> intense by this point. So I knew that it was close. We started pushing around, I think it was about five 30, about five 30, I think is when I started to push. Yeah. And I, everything went well. It was amazing. My husband was right there. Tiffany was right there. Everybody was kind of smiling, happy. It was, it was great. And then he was born at 603. So it wow. wasn't long at all. Yeah. Breach it babies went- tend to be quick. Like once it starts, they tend to come fairly quickly. Yeah. And, and he, he was, was his he little was foot, lane. foot was born. Foot lane like, his, he was complete breach because mm-hmm. he was like sitting like this. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. But his little, one of his little feet popped out first. And yes. Kelsey and Aaron didn't know that they were having a boy. We (laughs) all thought that it was a girl. Like I even made Kelsey buy a girl decoration whenever she was, (laughs) do you remember that? Um, Whenever she was pregnant, because I was convinced that she was having a girl. So I have to tell you the amount of shock that was on all of our faces (laughs) whenever he comes out and he has little testicles and we can't even tell her. that it's a boy because she's the one that has to announce it. Yeah. Cause those in a a vaginal, yeah. In a vaginal breech birth, those testes like to just hang out right there. It was so (laughs) stressful. It was so stressful. But in a good way, I'm sure. In a good way. Yes. Yes. But when he, (laughs) when he was, when he came out and I could see him. So in my mind, the only thing I wanted was I needed him to be out and awake and crying and alert. And I didn't want him. I knew that resuscitation was a possibility, but I didn't want that. Obviously no mom does, but yeah, my biggest fear was if he had to be resuscitated after he was born. Um, because I, I had watched a ton of videos. I had listened to multiple podcasts and Mm -hmm. they made it very clear that this could happen. And so, um, you know, if you're aware about it, then your anxiety could be less and the tr- the trauma could be less if that happens to your baby. And so I was mentally prepared if he would need to be resuscitated afterwards, but I was right. praying that he didn't. And so yeah. after I pushed him out and I could look between my legs and he was there, I just was so excited that he was awake 
and moving all of his extremities and was alert. And yeah, he was, he was so healthy when he came out and that part was forever key in my mind, like forever the best part of seeing him out and moving and not to need resuscitation was just That's amazing. It was amazing. so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I still tear up at like every single birth that I go to, but right. you know, this birth particularly was so special, not only because Kelsey is a friend and a repeat client, but because of like the circumstances mm-hmm. and I just couldn't stop crying. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm so jealous that I didn't get to be there. The amount (laughs) of joy that was in the room. I mean, and I know obviously, you know, you, Rachel, and like the listeners don't know her husband, um, but I do. (laughs) And I'm like seeing him cry, you know, of course makes the crying even more, but Uh like just seeing how happy they were. And um, it was just, it was beautiful. And you avoided major abdominal surgery. Yes. Yes. And we're still able to have a perfectly healthy baby and then an easier recovery postpartum, better hormone flow, better health for your baby. Like, I mean, all the good stuff. I didn't have any tears this time around. I recovered very quickly. I, I, yeah, I have nothing else to say besides I am so thankful that I did this. I love it. I just, I just. The vaginal breach birth was amazing. That's, that's so awesome. And again, you just, you trusted your body, you trusted your baby, you trusted your instincts and, you know, just God gave you all the answers. Your body gave you all the answers and you just trusted and your husband trusted you. And it just turned into such an amazing birth story. Amazing and safe and comfortable and just perfect. That's what I want to make clear is like, this was safe. Um, I think to the listeners, you know, there was nothing about it that was unsafe. Kelsey was safe the entire time. Her baby was healthy the entire time. Like it was great. Yeah. And listeners, if you're wanting to learn more about vaginal breach birth, you can go back to one of our previous episodes that I have with Dr. Hayes from Breach Without Borders. And we talk a lot more about vaginal breach birth in that episode, because I think we all think like Kelsey did at first where, oh, baby's breach. We can't get baby to turn. My only option is a C-section. And that is just not the case. There may be some areas of the country where that might be your only option, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah. as a whole, in general, you have other safe options than just a C-section. So I'll probably link that dis- that episode in the description below for anybody who's wanting to learn more. Yeah. Any last minute thoughts? Mm-hmm. Not really. I might, I, I hope that anyone who has just the least bit interest in pursuing either home birth or a vaginal breach birth, just make sure you're constantly seeking education. And even if you're a first time mom, educate yourself. Mm -hmm. That is something I regret early on uh, that I did not educate myself, but I also don't know that I would have had the experiences I did today had I have done so much work initially. Very true. Very true. I feel like everything happens for a reason. And I had three very different births for a reason. And I do think that this is going to change my future, you know, with my job and my career where I go from here. So I'm thankful for this, but if I could spare somebody a C-section, do your work first. Well, that's the perfect chance for me to plug the natural birth online education (laughs) class. So... (laughs) Listeners, if you want an online, like comprehensive and fairly inexpensive option for natural birth education, you can check the description below and check out our natural birth education class. It talks a little bit about breach. It talks about all, I mean, it it covers everything. It's comprehensive, like I said. So I won't go into all the details, but you can definitely check the description to find the link to learn more about that. So thank you. Yeah. Kelsey, that was such like, thank you for sharing with us. That was so awesome. I think it's really going to help some listeners out there. I think it's really motivating. And I mean, it's just awesome. I just love we, you know, we always want those safe, Uh awesome stories. And I think I'm okay. I was rambling anyway. So (laughs) All right. Awesome. I'll just back up well, and I'll so ramble much, Kelsey. We really appreciate you coming on Thanks and sharing your story. Yeah. This was awesome. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Thank you that everybody gets to like hear your awesome story and learn a lot from it. Like Tiffany said, we really appreciate you being on. Well, thank you, ladies. You're doing wonderful things. 
Thank you. All right. All right, listeners, like I said a million times already, check the description below and we'll talk to you in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Hi, Rachel Manns again. If you want to learn more, please subscribe to and rate this podcast and head over to thenaturalbirthsite.com to check out our online natural birth education course, birth story blog, YouTube channel, and more.